Hey guys, so I wanted to make this quick tutorial to show you guys how to make a beautiful thumbnail for YouTube. As you know, you've watched a lot of my videos and I want to actually show you how to make the thumbnails that I make. So if you want to make a great thumbnail, it's going to rely on your photography and some basic graphic design skills. You can do it in Illustrator if you want, but it's going to be much easier in Photoshop. So I'm going to get right into it today. So you're going to create a new document, Command N, Control N, open up a new document. You're going to put in your width. Make sure you're selected on pixels here, 1920 by 1080. That's going to be your actual dimensions for your artboard. I'm going to keep the resolution at 72. If you want to make it bigger, you can. It's not going to change anything. I have my artboards checked on. Um, if you want to do a A-B split test, which I can recommend, uh, can be a very good thing. You can keep that. If not, you can uncheck that, but I like to have it on just in case. Then you're going to hit create. So here's your canvas. So you're going to have this beautiful canvas here. Let me move this out of my way. There you go. And so what I'm going to do is I need to have a good photo. So what we'll do first is we'll jump on and get a nice photo to use. So we'll pick something I have in my downloads. Let's just see here. I have quite a few photos. Let's just say I wanted to do something for my channel. Just as an example, I could have picked something out. Here we go. We'll just use this one as an example, right? And I want to make a nice thumbnail out of this. This photo might look familiar to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this out, make this a little bit bigger because this is a huge photo, right? So what you want to do is be able to focus on making sure that your thumbnail has enough room for the text. So I'm going to bring this right up in here and center that. Boom, that looks pretty nice. And now I have this whole open area here to create more text. And so what I'm going to do is there's a couple different ways you can go about creating your text on your thumbnail. One, you can fill it in and have it fill in as much of the space. And that's what I actually recommend. So I can click, let's just go out about here because you want to leave a little bit of a gutter, right? And just click in here. I'm going to fill in this spot. I'm going to go here and we're actually going to hopefully make this text kind of go behind my arms. So we're going to do something cool here so you can see exactly how this works. And we'll just come up with a name for how to make the in fact i'm not really taking my own advice here what i teach to my clients is you don't really want to do more than four words so we're going to do this the perfect youtube thumb nail there we go all right so we're going to do that i'm going to left align this thing here boom and i'm going to make this text bigger. i'm going to hold down shift and arrow up and i apologize you could probably hear the train going on there i'm going to bring this out to the edge of my hat and then I'm going to hit Alter Option, and I'm going to hit the arrow down, and it's going to bring this down a little bit. Okay. So as you can see here, it's kind of coming right below the chair, and it's coming right behind my arm. Uh, I can do that. If I wanted to make YouTube bigger, I could. Uh, if I wanted to spread this out more, I could. So I'm actually I'm going to do that a little bit here. I want to fill in the space as much as possible. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll just take this in. And I'll just hit Alter Option and go to the left a little bit and just bring it, just current it a little bit. That's called kerning. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually take this bottom line. So like I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As I'm holding Alt and Option, and I'm going to do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I want to do is I want to leave some space for the YouTube logo. So I'm going to hit Tab. Tab, 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 tab. There we go. That's pretty aligned right there. It gives me a little space. Now I'm going to have that. Now that I have that in there, there's a couple things you can do. So if you've seen my thumbnails, you'll notice that I've actually taken my text. I'm just going to duplicate that layer. Command J, or Control, Control J. Then I'm actually going to hit Convert to Smart Object. Whoops, I have to right click over here first. Convert it to a Smart Object. Now that's a, I can hit Command T or Control T. Right click. I'm going to hit perspective and you'll see me doing this on my thumbnails as I actually bring this down. So you'll notice I do a slant on all my thumbnails and I do that for a reason. It's just my personal style. I like to add some flavor, not just have it be straight text. And then what I would do on top of that is I'm going to take a box that's in my red color. I have my own Pantone color, A42027. I call it Adrian Burgundy. Pretty funny, huh? We're going to grab this. I'm going to bring it out so it's about the same width. Bring this down a little taller. I'm going to fill it with my red. I'm going to turn the stroke off. And then I'm going to take this same shape. Let me minimize this real fast here. 
There we go. I'm going to do the same thing. Command T or Control T. Right click on the object. Hit Perspective. And I'm going to bring this up. What I want to do is just make sure that it's aligned first height wise. There we go. That's about right. Yes. I'm going to bring it behind it. Perfect. You can see I can drop this down. And I can actually make this a little bigger now. So I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't need to hold down Shift. I forgot they changed that. There we go. I can bring that in. And then I can actually bring this in this way now. Just make it a little tighter. And then what I'll do is hit perspective again. Raise this back up so it's nice and even. There we go. I'm a perfectionist. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually going to add a little, whoops, not to this one. I'm going to go to this layer, double click it. I'm going to add a drop shadow. Boom. You see that? It was already kind of set up pretty nice. I got a 60 there uh, on my opacity. I got a zero on the distance, I, which means it's directly behind it. There's no slant. You can see here if I pull this out, it goes out the opposite direction because the angle is this way. Command Z or go back. I can do it this way, switch it and go that way with it. But I actually like it directly behind it like that. I will probably drop this down just a little bit more to 40. There we go. It's nice and subtle. And then I mentioned that I wanted to drop the YouTube logo. So what I'll do is I'll open up an existing document. So let's see here, thumbnail, that's not it. Let's find the right image here. I'm just gonna save us some time. Let's see here, let's just open up. We'll just open up my documents. This is gonna make it a lot faster. Okay, let me just go into my previous folders. Maybe it's in here. Nope, let's try one more place. There we go. So I got a lot of graphics in here, lots of stuff, but it doesn't look like I have the YouTube logo. So what we'll do real quick is we'll just go over to YouTube. You can see here, youtube.com. Actually, we will go to Google. And you gotta be careful that you're not taking a site uh, logo and just using it without permission. So YouTube logo. I'm just gonna grab something simple for now, just for an example of this video. I'm gonna right click it, copy it, Go over here, Command V, paste that in there. Wow, that's huge, right? Command T or Control T to make it transform. Then I'm gonna bring this back down. Boom, just keep making it smaller. I wanna make this small enough to fit in that little space. Boom, the perfect YouTube thumbnail, right? I got YouTube in there, so now I'm gonna do the th same thing. Command T or Control T, hit the perspective. Come up in here. Boom, make it match the rest of my branding. So I can put that in there as a little banner. If I really wanted to, I could bring this over to the left a little bit more. There we go. And I could take this background out if I wanted to put this somewhere else, which I kind of like the idea of putting this in here. I like to highlight at least one of the words. So I'm going to do that real quick and see how this looks. Boom. The perfect YouTube thumbnail. So what I need to do though, is I need to bring this out a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to bring this text all of this text a little, a little bit more. There we go. Now, how do I get this thing behind my arm? That's probably what you're wondering. As you can see here, we've already created a pretty decent thumbnail. Uh, I could literally cut myself out, cut my whole background out if I want to, just by using this magic wand tool or the background eraser tool. This is super choppy, but just to give you an example, I could just, I'm just gonna do it really choppy for the second. Just so you can see, grab this in there. I can hit, can, uh, I can hit shift and actually add a little bit more to it keep adding more to it if I really wanted to. Boom, there we go. So then I can go in here and create a new layer and I can grab my paint bucket tool and I could fill this, right? See, if you want to do it clean and you wanted to do it better than that, you could. That's totally up to you, but I was just showing you an example of how you can fill in the background to make it less distracting. But the question that I want to answer for you is how do you get this thing to show up behind my arm? If I wanted to bring this in even more, let's just say, which I could do, right, but right there, there we go, to give it some space from the edge. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command J or Control J. I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm actually gonna take these two layers here, and I'm gonna hit Convert to Smart Object. Now that I have it as a smart object, then I'm gonna hit the Layer Mask tool right here, add a layer mask, make sure to go over to my brush. I'm gonna actually turn the opacity down a little bit, okay, to 50. We're gonna turn these layers off for just the moment, right? I'm going to zoom in and now you can see exactly where I need to erase, but I'm actually not erasing it. I'm using the layer mask tool. If you erase it, you can't go back and undo it. You're going to have to probably use a lot of steps and it's, there's only so far back that you can go. So what I'm going to do here, 
Let's do this. Let's see here. I'm going to click this and drag. There we go. Oh, I got to make sure that should have erased. Give me a second. There we go. I did. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger. I can just hit the uh, little tool here next to my characters. Let's see. There we go. Little bracket tool next to the forward slash, just to the left of the forward slash or the backslash or the straight line on your keyboard. Do the same thing here. Just click and drag. Same thing here. Click and drag. Boom. Click in here. Click and drag. Make sure I do it up here. Make this a little smaller. Boom. There we go. So now I have that in there. I'm actually going to pull the opacity back up. There we go. And now it's behind my arm. So it's kind of coming out from behind me. If I really wanted to take more time on this, I wanted to keep this tutorial pretty short. I could do some extra things. I could adjust the coloring on this thing so I could go down with it. I could adjust the lightness and the darkness. I could probably even match this uh, color to my actual colors if I wanted to, but I don't want to mess with the YouTube logo. I really don't. I want to keep it as simple and as clean as possible. What I would like to do is actually move this text just to make it a little bit more perfect. Let's see here. Got to be careful. Uh, that's right, because I already made it a smart object, but I'm not going to be able to move this text now unless I actually double click into here. Click this. Oh, it's a smart object. There we go. Smart object inside of a smart object. So we're going to go like this. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with the, holding the Alt or Option button. I'm going to hit Command S and save it on the smart object. Now I should be able to go back, save, and see it, it did adjust just a little bit there. So now I can bring this up. Whoops. I can bring that up if I want to. Again, clicking into this. There we go. Hit save. Close that out. Now that looks really, really nice. So that's how I would do that. That's like essentially my perfect thumbnail. I do want to add a little layer mask behind this just to give you one more little tip, quick tip. Uh, if you want to actually have this be a little bit easier to read, you can go white. Because I have already the the white text, white wouldn't look good, obviously, right? So I'm going to use a darker text. I'm going to grab my gradient tool here. I'm going to click up in here. I'm going to hit this one that's clear on one side or transparent on one side. I'll just click that and hit delete. Now I have this nice gradient layer. I'm actually going to take this and click, just hold shift down and drag. Boom. Oh, I get it the wrong direction. Let's do that the other way. So we'll go right here and we'll click and drag. Boom. Now I can actually bring this out. Whoops. I'm going to hold down shift and bring this out even further. There we go. And then if I want to just get rid of any darkness that just showed up over my face, again, you can do the layer mask, hit B. What I'm going to do is just make sure that I have it, the hardness turned down just a little bit. There you go. I'm even going to turn down the flow a little bit to about 80%. There you go. And I'm going to make this bigger. Again, you get a bigger size. Now I can see, I can bring myself back out. You can see here, if I want to make it fade more, then I need to make this bigger. So I'll make this even larger. There we go. Nice, even flow. I actually don't like that very much, so let me fix that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this even softer. So we'll go at about 10%. And we'll do the same thing. So let me move this out of my way. There we go. See, nice clean fade. And that thumbnail really stands out. In fact, I might actually be able to use this one for this video. Who knows? Maybe I'll just use this one for this video because it's clean. I do want to move this up now because it's a little bit off. The perfect YouTube thumbnail. Now, if you stand back from this, once I upload it, you'll be able to see this from a mile away. You'll notice if I bring these in, I have maxed out the real estate that's available in this thumbnail. I could make it even bigger if I wanted. I could move myself over here even more and max this out. In fact, I'm actually going to do that real quick while you guys are here. There we go. I'll take this layer and this layer. I'm going to bring this out even more. I will have to adjust my layer mask, and this is why I didn't want you guys. There we go. Look at that. There we go. Uh, and now that I've done that, I'm going to have to go in here, adjust the opacity again, click back to my layer mask over here, hit B. You guys are learning a lot today. I'm making this a little longer than I expected, but it's okay. I'm going to go back to 100. Here we go. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Boom. 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 Just holding down. I'm clicking, holding shift when I do this. 
so I can make sure I get it as perfect as possible. Whoops, a little off right there. I'm a perfectionist, so there we go. All right. I think I'm almost happy with that. Let me make this a little smaller just to make sure it's super, super clean. There we go. Oh, see that? I mixed it up right there. That looks really nice. And then oh, I got this little corner again here. Boom. There we go. So I'm happy with that. I'll turn the whoops. I'll turn the opacity back up on this. And there we go. That is a beautiful thumbnail. I just showed you guys how to do that in about 15 minutes. I'm sure it'll take you a little bit longer if you've never done this before. This is a great way to make a thumbnail. This is how I do all my thumbnails myself. And this is what I've taught Ian to do. So hope this was helpful for you guys. I really enjoy doing these tutorials and I'm going to do more of them. So thank you guys so much for being with me today and I'll see you guys on the next one. Keep looking up.